Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Let's talk about all the books that I read for the month of May. For the month of May, I read a total of 11 books, a total of 5,055 pages. My genres were dark contemporary romance, dark fantasy romance, dark romance, and I think that's pretty much it. My average rating for the month was 4.64. So with that being said, I didn't read as much books as I've read the last couple of months, but I did read lots of great books. Before we get into the video, if you haven't already, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button button. That way you never miss another one of my videos. Before we start, just keep in mind some of these books are part of a series and I did read multiple books in that series. So I kind of organized the books intentionally all together even though I did or did not read them back to back if that makes sense. So let's start off with the Chestnut Spring series. I read Flawless, Heartless, and powerless. So let's go over them. I told myself this summer that I was going to finally start and finish the Chestnut Spring series. And so once I started with book one, which was Flawless, I could not look back and I literally could have binged the rest of the series. And if you're not aware of what the Chestnut Spring series is, it's a cowboy romance series. We're following the Eaton brothers. Most of them are cowboys in this series and you're just following them and their love interest throughout the books. The first book is Flawless. In this book, we're following Rhett and Summer and I love Summer's name by the way I just love her name. Rhett is a professional bull rider and he's got a mouth on him okay so much so that one day he's caught on camera talking very poorly about milk and so this is not a good thing for Rhett because he is sponsored by a lot of dairy companies so his agent decides to send his daughter who had just recently graduated from college as an attorney to kind of babysit him and to make sure he stays on his toes and he doesn't say anything off the wall that will jeopardize his career and his sponsorships it's their romance he probably has has the mouth on this man let me just say I gave this book a five star okay it was so good in the beginning of the book I was like okay this is cute this is okay I don't know if I'm crazy about it you know it's fine whatever I like it it's cutesy one day I'm cleaning the house and I kid you not the mouth on this man okay we get to the steamy scenes and oh my gosh, am I blushing as I'm cleaning countertops? Am I giggling? Am I like, <gasps> you know, shocked of some of the things that he says, especially introducing myself to cowboy romances. The mouth on this man automatically pushed this book up to a five-star read for me. It is filthy, it is dirty, and he gives no Fs about it, okay? He does not care, and it's just so hot. It's so hot. And Summer is described as this very prestigious, very uptight, beautiful girl, but she's got her rules. She wants to follow them. And, you know, she's super uptight. And Rhett just doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> So this is why the romance just meshes so well together. We also have the fact that she has to move in to their family ranch and keep a close eye on him. So there's forced proximity there. I'm just telling you, this because I finally started reading this, I couldn't stop and I had to read Heartless and Powerless as well. It was just that good. I enjoyed it so much. Let's talk about Heartless. Now this one is... I don't know if I want to say much, but this one is an age gap. This one follows Cade and Willa, and Willa is Summer's best friend in this world. Cade is one of the brothers, and Cade is a single dad, so we have age gap, single dad. Willa becomes his nanny obviously forced proximity. I feel like this is everybody's favorite. However, for me, it wasn't. For some reason, it wasn't. Cade's mouth again is filthy. He's probably, out of all the brothers, he's the grumpiest, the most rudest, mean brother that there is in this series. And his mouth is super filthy, probably filthier than Rhett's. But for some reason, this wasn't my favorite. I don't know why. I did like the relationship that Willa does have with Cade's little boy, who I think is five years old. I could be wrong. He could be older. But the relationship that Willa and Luke have together, I think his name is Luke, it's just so great. I loved reading about that. I loved reading about about kids in books. I just love how freaking hard Cade loves this woman, but it takes him a while to kind of realize that and admit that to himself. There is something else that happens in this book that I had no idea that was gonna happen, and it took me by surprise, but to me it was done well. I mean, considering the circumstances, how shocking it was type of thing. I'm being very vague, okay? Because the back of the book doesn't really say what happens 
but I don't, I don't want to say much, but something happens and they have to deal with it and then they have to like decide what they want to do with their relationship type of thing. But again, this is a lot of people's favorites, just not mine for some reason. I do love Grumpy. I love Willa as a character. I think she's so sassy, feisty, and very vulgar. She, she has no filter on her mouth and she says the most... <sighs> outrageous things that you should not be saying in public or to a person she says them and I love her for it I love her character for that she made the book for me and the steamy scenes of course were exceptional they were really good but again I gave this one a four just because for some reason it wasn't my favorite I don't know why I did enjoy it but it just wasn't my all-time favorite now let's talk about powerless this is a childhood best friends to lovers this was my favorite and this is my favorite so far out of the series I still have the other two books to read but just the relationship the friendship. I love this book so much. This is my favorite, obviously. And in this one, we're following Jasper and Sloane. And Jasper is kind of been the guy who's been adopted in the family. He's not by blood one of the actual family members, but he's been adopted due to certain circumstances and due to what happened in his childhood. Sloane is a cousin of the brothers. Right off the bat, you can tell how much these two love each other. Sloane and Jasper have known each other for years and years, ever since Jasper has been formally adopted by this family. They've always had had this unspoken love and connection for each other since they were kids and it's just so heartfelt and it's so happy sad and it's so emotional how these two love each other for years and years it first starts off with Sloan being absolutely head over heels as a child in love with Jasper. Jasper he is a little older and he just didn't see her that way when they were younger, but she has never stopped loving him. I'm trying really hard not to talk too much about this book, okay? Without spoiling anything for you guys, you get dual POV with all these books and be in Jasper's mind and he starts to realize how much he truly does love Sloane, how long he's actually loved her without knowing it. And it's just so good. They end up taking a road trip together, things go from there, there. The way this book starts is so great. Already gripped me from the beginning because they had a scene, they had a scenario, and I don't want to say anymore because it doesn't say it on the back. It definitely makes Jasper open up his eyes and realize that he might see Sloane than just a friend. He might see her more than that. And I thought it was so sweet. I love them together as people. I love how together they're better, you know, like they're better people because they have each other. And it was just so good. This book hit the spot for me in an emotional, deeper level. It was just so heartfelt and beautiful and emotional. To me, this one did it. This is my favorite book out of the series so far. And I don't, honestly, I don't think it's gonna change because it just impacted me that much. If I didn't say it before, I gave this one a five star. Automatically, after a couple pages, five star. <laughs> then I read Zodiac Academy, The Reckoning Book 3 in this series by Carolyn Pickman and Suzanne Valenti. I'm really enjoying this series. I gave this one a four star. I'm not gonna tell you much because it is book three, but I am really enjoying it as you read along and as you read further into the books. It starts picking up, starts getting steamier. There's a lot of things happening. The plot is thickening. Like there's there's so many things going on in these books. Your reading experience is amplified. It's so good. I don't know how to explain these books to you. Book one probably has the worst writing. I'm not sure if at this point I've just gotten used to the writing or if I could just stomach it, but I know book one was horrible and the audiobook was just as bad. But once you get to the next books in the series, it just gets better. And I think I've read this with my eyeballs. I did not listen to the audio at all because again, the people that are narrating at least the Zodiac Academy books are just they're not that good, okay? They're not that good. So I did read this with my eyeballs, which I'm so proud of because this is a very chunky book. It's over 600 and something pages. I'm really enjoying it and I do highly recommend it. Because I read that and I'm following that order, which I was telling you guys about, where I combine the Ruthless Boy series, which is kind of a different series, but does take place prior to Zodiac Academy. So you can kind of combine them together. Because I'm doing that, I stopped at book three with Zodiac Academy and I started book one Dark Fate from the Ruthless Boy series. This series is a lot faster than Zodiac Academy. I will say that. It's a lot steamier too. Book one, I don't think we had much steam. I do have like a weekly reading vlog that I will be linking down below where I talk about most of these books in this video because I was reading throughout the week most of them at the same time. I'm not going to go into much detail about this. I will say I did enjoy the first book of this series better than I did did Zodiac Academy. It just picks up much faster. You're glued in right from the first sentence. This is also a dark academia, bully romance. 
balance. It's not as bully heavy as Zodiac Academy. There's also shifters. You're following, I think her name, I forgot the name of the main character, Elsie. Her brother got murdered, but the town that she lives in or the city that she lives in is very poor. She kind of lives in the slums. Everybody there is known to die from drugs. So the police closed the case saying that he died of an overdose, but Elsie knows her brother, or I think her name is Elise. Elise knows her brother very well. Her brother was kind of like a high achiever. He was about to go to this prestigious school. All of a sudden he ends up being dead. She suspects that somebody actually murdered him. And so her goal is to find out who did and seek revenge. And by doing that, she enlists herself in Aurora Academy, which is Zodiac Academy's rivalry school. Rivalry, rivalry school. <laughs> And she enlists herself in her brother's place to kind of investigate on her own and find out and get close to those people that she thinks murdered her brother. Her main target is the Ruthless Boys, which they're kind of the head of the school. They are the most powerful men or boys. They're all different shifters. We have a Bisselec, we have a Lion Shifter, we have a Harpy, we have a Dragon Shifter. It's their romance with her. So I think this is kind of like a white shoes romance maybe, but at the end I know she chooses one but that's the kind of vibes I've been getting when I read book one and let's just say the way that book one ended I immediately wanted to pick up book two and I did listen to the audiobook on this 10 times better we have different narrators and it's just perfection so I was just holding off on not trying to splurge and spend the money on the audiobook until it was kind of on sale you know that is the only reason why I didn't binge books two and three the way that this ended on a freaking cliffhanger I just, I can't wait for June's TBR. Just so you know, you will be seeing the second book on that video, okay? I gave this a 4.5. Not necessarily a 5 because there was something missing from it, but I really, really enjoyed this. This is more fast paced than Zodiac Academy. I will give you that. So if you did want to read some of Carolyn Pickman and Suzanne Valenti's work and you didn't want to start with Zodiac Academy, you can definitely start with this. The reason why I'm combining them together, and I've said this before, is because if I wanted to read most of her series, which is at least these two series for now, if I read book four in Zodiac Academy and then jump to this, because there's so many different reading orders, but the one that made sense for me is stop at book three and then jump to books one through five, because this is the five book series, and then go back to book four and finish Zodiac Academy. And the reason being is because if you don't do it that way and you read books one through four of Zodiac Academy, Academy, then you are going to be spoiled with one of the guys in this book on who he ends up with. So you will be spoiled on that potential relationship if you read books one through four instead of one through three, which is why you have to stop at book three, Zodiac Academy, and jump on to the Ruthless Boy series, which is books one through five, and just read them all together. And then from there, you're not spoiled. I don't really like being spoiled, especially if I'm combining series together. So that's why my reading order is that way. It makes sense to me. But anyways, enough about the history and the order of how you should read these books because I really think you should read these books because they're so good. Forget about the cringy writing, who cares? They're a fun time, you will never be bored, okay? You will never just not want to pick it up. And even though these books are chunky, you will finish them quicker than you think because they're so bingeable. There's so many things going on. The magic system is great. The fact that we have different shifters, the academy itself is great. The relationship are good the bully romances are good you know <sighs> I could go on and on okay I can go on and on that is my two cents that is my tea for these books 4.5 really highly recommend enjoyed it can't wait to move on to the other books in the series then I read The Veiled Kingdom by Holly Renee I gave this one a 4.5 because okay let me just be really honest with you I did not know anything about this book. I just knew that this was an enemies to lovers romanticy. That's it. But everybody raves about this book like no other. Everybody talks so highly about this book. They say it's super steamy and it's so great and it's easy to, to digest. There's not a lot of world building or there's not a lot of politics. So I'm like, great, I'm in it for the steamy scenes. I'm sorry, I'm in it for the steamy scenes because that is what I'm interested in because everybody's like, it's so steamy. We don't get into the steamy scenes until towards the end of the book, but they're good. We get three scenes and they're exceptional. They're so good, okay? The tension's there, the banter is there, and it's just so fun. I had such a great time reading this book. I gave it a 4.5 and the only reason why I didn't give it a 5 was because I was anticipating more steamy scenes or I was expecting more from it, if you know what I mean. Honestly, I don't really, I don't really, I don't really 
remember a lot about it just because it was a good time it was a great book it was fast paced it's got everything you want in a fantasy romance but I kind of forgot about it after I read the other books in this stack three in particular that we'll go over in a second this one we're following Dacre and Nira and Nira is living amongst the kingdom in the royal house her father rules the kingdom he's not a good man so she has been locked away in this palace forever because she doesn't have magical powers and her father is kind of embarrassed by it if I could remember right and so she escapes she escapes her father's palace she gets captured by the rebels the rebels are people that have escaped this kingdom and now live underground in this different world underneath the palace that they've created themselves because they don't um what's the word they don't they don't agree with the way the king has run the kingdom. The king is very cruel. They don't agree with his ways or how he is running the kingdom as a king. So they rebel against him. She gets caught by Dacre because he was trying to save his sister because she was imprisoned. His sister does not want to leave her behind. She helped her through these times while they're stuck in a dungeon being imprisoned. And it's their romance. He is the leader of this rebellion group and she can't tell him who she is because they will literally kill her for it. So it's their romance they hate each other there's so much good banter there's so much back and forth the tension is so freaking good when you think that they're going to kiss or they're gonna do something a little bit further they get interrupted something happens they don't get there and it's just such a good book to tease you because once it gets to the steamy scenes it's perfection okay it's perfection so 4.5 highly recommend I had a great time reading it and it was a short book then I read Emily Henry's funny story and I gave this one a 4.5 I absolutely love this book it was just so good it was to me it was tender it was emotional it was sweet I love Emily Henry's writing this one is very unique in particular because this one we're following Daphne and Miles they become roommates under very very unfortunate circumstances turns out that his girlfriend has a best friend who happens to be Daphne's fiance at the time they've been childhood best friends forever when Miles's girlfriend Petra realizes that Daphne's fiance is getting married which I forgot his name they all of a sudden decide that they loved each other forever and that they should be together so they end up being together while Daphne and Miles end up being dumped and so they're in this scenario where Daphne has to move out of her former fiance's house and has nowhere to go so she ends up living with Miles it's so tender and it's so sweet because they are totally polar opposites she's very schedule driven and she's very neat and he's more you know, of a pothead and he is messy and he doesn't have his life together, but they work so well because they form this beautiful friendship and do things together as roommates. And then that beautiful friendship blossoms into a relationship that they had no idea was gonna smack them in the face. And that's why I love this so much. It's just so beautiful. I really enjoyed it. It was a perfect time for me to read it. Highly recommend it. I'm sure you guys have read it too, 4.5. I loved it so much. I didn't give it a five star just because I don't know there's just something about it that didn't give me the five star feeling but nonetheless I really enjoyed it and you guys should read it if you haven't already by the way I have four more books to talk about and I feel like this video is gonna be super long so bear with me I'm sweating okay I I feel like in the month of May I completely blacked out I've read such amazing books but I've blacked out <laughs> so let's talk about the next book i read and i don't have a copy of it i read it on my kindle because i felt like i wanted to read it right away and i just didn't want to wait so after reading these books i wanted to kind of step into the dark side you know because i don't know if i'm a dark romance girly yet but i want to know if i can be one i've seen a bunch of people recommend this to start off with i don't recommend it because it's super dark Okay, if you're trying to start off reading a dark romance and you want to dip your toes, this is probably not the series that you should start off with first, but I did because I'm ballsy like that and I regret nothing. I had such a great time even though it was super dark. The first book that you should read before you read The Cat and Mouse Duet by H.D. Carlton is Satan's Affair. Let me just tell you, this is like a taste tester of what you're going to be getting yourself into when you read The Cat and Mouse Duet, okay? This is disturbing, but in the best way possible. And in this book, we're following, what's her name? We're following Sibby in this book. And Sibby has had a very rough childhood. And because she's had a rough childhood, she is a little 
you know, a little crazy, okay? Just a little, but in the best way possible, okay? In this book, we are following a Halloween carnival or Halloween fair called Satan's Affair, and in Satan's Affair, there is a very creepy dollhouse, and in this dollhouse, we have Sibby, who can potentially sniff out the rapists, the child molesters, the human traffickers, the very bad people. Because she has this gift, which I believe she could totally do that, she decides to take advantage of the fact that she works at Satan's Affair and sniff out the bad people. And when she does, and the fair is closed, she seeks revenge. It goes from there, okay? This is wild. Just the beginning of it starts off strong. I was shocked to my core. It is disturbing. It is sick. It is twisted, but in the best way possible. And Sibby is a side character that you do meet in Haunting and Hunting Adeline. So it is important that if you want to follow the series to the T, that you actually read her story first. It's just following her story. And I'm telling you, I had such a freaking great time reading it, despite the fact that it was disturbing, but it was a very nice introduction for me to get me ready and to kind of like buckle up for the cat and mouse duet. So I gave this one a five star. I enjoyed it so much. I loved it. I love Sibby as a character. I hope she has her own book one day aside from this little novella. And it was a quick, fast read that I highly recommend, but I don't know if you should start this duet when you're trying to dabble in dark romance because it is very disturbing. Always check your trigger warnings before you get into these books because a lot of stuff is very, very hard to read. So just keep that in mind. Then of course, after that, I immediately jumped into Hunting Adeline and Hunting Adeline. Let me just tell you, these books are definitely a five-star read for me. These books are the reason why I actually love dark romance. And I'm not like your hardcore dark Dark romance girly yet but that doesn't mean I won't be because of these books they're so good it's so hard to read though let me just tell you book one was fine it wasn't that bad it introduces you to Zaid and Adeline Adeline is a famous author one day she's doing a book signing and Zaid just happens to walk into a bookstore because he just needs I don't know why he decides to walk into that bookstore one day, but he does. He walks into the bookstore and he sees Adeline for the first time from afar and he absolutely becomes obsessed with her. So this is a dark stalker romance and it's, again, very triggering. There's non-consent, there's gunplay, there's knife play, there's just so many good things. I was not deterred from any of those steamy scenes. I actually highlighted a lot of them because they were just so good, so off the wall, so outlandish, so crazy, but in a good way. And the reason why we love Zayd so much in these books is because yes, he's cruel. Yes, he takes from her. He is a bad man, a criminal, because he has created this underground company that takes down human trafficking, those specific people, and obviously tortures them. And so it's their romance. Again, check your trigger warnings. I absolutely love these books to the core. I love them so much that I will be getting a tattoo. My first tattoo is going to be based off of these books. I love Zayd. You think he's sick, cruel, and mean, and crazy, and psychotic, but you can't help but love them because at the same time, the way that he shows that he cares about her, how he leaves her random roses, even though he's stalking her like a psychopath, you just can't help but love that about him, okay? I don't know what that says about me as a person, but I will say that I absolutely love him as a character. There was nothing that he didn't do in this book that made me feel uncomfortable. I ate it up. I loved it. I love morally black gray men, I guess, because this was probably an introduction to how cruel and mean men can be, but at the same time, he's a hero because he's doing all these great things with his company, trying to take down human trafficking, seeking revenge and torturing those who have taken advantage of women and children. It's so good, you guys. It's so good. Book one is... To me, it wasn't that disturbing and that triggering. Book two, though, book two was very disturbing, super hard to read. Let me just let you know that after you get to part two, it gets better. But you have to basically read and digest the first 300 and something pages to be okay with everything else that happens at the end. These books were perfection. <sighs> Enter at your own risk. Don't let me be the one that influences you on this, but yes, 
hell yes, you should read this series. It was just so good. Okay, so good. It's the reason why I want to read more doc romances now, and I'm not afraid to because I started with this one. So five star. This is automatically a five star read for me. Absolutely loved it. Okay, and then finally, we're down to the last book in this video, and because I've read these super dark disturbing romance series. I wanted something light and fluffy like a palette cleanser. So I ended up picking up The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. I know this has been around for a few years now. I know I am late to the bandwagon, okay? But I freaking love this book. I loved it so much. I gave this book, I think it was five star, 4.5. This is so good. This takes place in Maui. It's a fake marriage. It's so good. We're following Olive and we're following Ethan and Olive has a twin. Her twin sister is getting married. So at the night of the reception, everybody gets sick with food poisoning except for Olive and Ethan because Ethan is very picky eater and he just is picky. So he didn't eat from the seafood buffet that they had and Olive didn't eat from it either. Now keep in mind, Olive and Ethan absolutely hate each other, okay? They hate each other to the core. Because her sister wants to be able to take advantage of the fact that she won this beautiful two-week honeymoon to Maui, but she can't go because she's got food poisoning, she wants her sister to go and enjoy the honeymoon for her. And so does Ethan's brother, who is marrying Olive's sister. He tells Ethan to go ahead and take advantage of the honeymoon. Olive and Ethan are in this beautiful honeymoon in Hawaii, pretending to be married so that they could enjoy the benefits of this free vacation. It's their romance. The story goes from there and it's so good. The only reason why I didn't give it a five star was because I didn't like the third act conflict or the breakup or whatever you call it, the third act conflict. I didn't like how her sister handled it. It bothered me. I could understand Ethan's point of view in that, but I did not like how her sister handled the situation and how she treated Olive because of it. It really bothered me a lot. That's the only reason why I didn't give it a five, but I enjoyed it. It's a beautiful cover. It's a great summer read, especially getting off of the high of being in a dark romance in such a dark place with those books. This did it for me. It was the most perfect time to read this book. I enjoyed it a lot. Okay guys, so three hours later, I'm just kidding. There you have it though. That is my May wrap up. Those are all the books I read in May. I had a great reading month. I feel like every month I have a great reading month just because I keep it positive. Yes, yeah, so you're gonna have times where you're gonna read bad books, but then you're gonna have times where you're gonna read phenomenal books. And I feel like all of these books did something to me this month. I absolutely had a great time reading them. So that's it. That's it for today's video. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and I will catch you on my next one. Bye!